<laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so the first question is, and this is from the youths of City of David. The first question is, in a world where values have been changed and Christianity has become another thing, how can today's youth be prepared to be the voice of the church for the generation to come? Okay. Let me say the question again. In the world where values have been changed and Christianity become another thing, because I want to be looking at the question to answer, how can today's youth be prepared to be the voice of the church for the next generation? What I'm about to say now is not just for uh, City of David Tabernacle youth. Is all the young people, as many as possible, that can come across this information, this message, and for us to know something very significant. Number one, I am a generational bridge, which means at my age, I saw the older generations that brought this touch of revival and the fire of God. I saw them until they're all gone. And now the ones remaining are the ones that are handed over, which means they have to hand over to someone else. And the, it, it, when I sit down and look at questions like this, my heart pant. And I'm going to answer you, not just scripturally, but historically, what this is all about. Number one, every generation begins with the youth. Did you hear me? Every generation begins with the youth. That's why if we don't catch the young people, we lose a generation. The ark was lost by a generation and has not been recovered until it was obsolete. Jesus has to come to give another light. And if the light of what we have is not projected, we will lose another generation. God forbid. But say, the, the greatest way to be a voice for the next generation is preparation. Young people, you better hear me now. Preparation. You cannot have what you are not prepared for. Even if it's given to you, you will abuse it. And the way to prepare to be a voice for a generation is to know what happened yesterday. If you don't know the story of yesterday, there is no way you could take yesterday till tomorrow. And the best way now to bring the young people to be a voice changer is to bring them back to the cross where everything started. If you forget the cross, you have forgot your foundation. What happened at the cross? Why would God give up his only son? Why was the death? Why was the punishment? Why was Elijah Eli, Why was the blood spilled? Why was this young people? Why was the cross? It's not just to feel God, God lost me. Still, you don't know your route. I know who I am in Christ, but you don't know who you are. I'm a friend of God, but still an enemy of God. We say a lot of rhetorics, but we don't mean what we are saying. Let's get back to the cross. When we start kneeling at the cross, things will start changing. Every generational life starts from the cross. And at the same time, we need to know the story of what happened yesterday. The act, the Holy Ghost, the move of God, the power of God, the glory of God. We have to know this story until the story story is told the young people have nothing to run with because there is too much information now so the best thing is to show them a picture of what is happening see information creates curiosity and it is in curiosity you have you have what is called discovery 
If you're not curious about something, you won't discover. Until there is a discovery, there will be no recovery. If the young people are not ready to discover what this Christianity is all about, what is the difference between the old and the young, they will not carry the voice. Because the voice remains the same. It has not changed. The same voice you had in the cross, it is finished. It's still saying today. The same voice of the Holy Ghost is still saying today. God does not change. He changes things, but it doesn't change. So no matter how technology, everything will be happening. If young people understand one thing, let me chase after the glory that was seen at the Mount of Transfiguration that doesn't want them to leave the presence again. You heard about it, but you don't want to chase, about, chase anything about it. And to say this, I've I, I got to say this. I've got to say this. Another thing that will make you to be a voice for the next generation is sacrifice you need to pay. People are not ready to pay the price. Mm. Can I shock the entire church now? The price is not set by God. The price is set by Satan. It's Satan that set the price for you to pay. God did not set the price of the cross for his son to be brutally beaten, to die on the night with the nails. God didn't say, Satan said, this is the price tag for redemption. Mm. Jesus at the garden of Gethsemane said to the father, I will pay for it. Oh. He paid it and settled it. And now there is no other name given among men. We buy, we must be saved. But the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So if your generation want to carry the voice of God, tell the devil, you set the price, I'll pay for it. Because I can do all things through Christ who supplies the ability. Nothing stops me. I've made up my mind. It's all about decisions and choices. If I'm, I was talking to myself, say, I'm, if I'm a youth now, what is it that I will do differently? I will sit more at the seat of my parents. Than running away from sitting from them. Mm. I will hear my father more. Because when they go, their voice makes the difference in your life. I will hear them. I will listen to elders more. Because an elder sitting down will say, We see something a child standing up cannot see. The generation now is cutting off. What is happening now is cutting off the relationship between the older ones and the younger ones. That's a vacuum. Yeah. And now babies are feeding babies. They will suffocate the babies. There's no two ways about it. So that's how to become a voice. Lastly, can you give me Joel chapter 1 verse 3? Then we go on. This is the one I want to take more time. The rest will be two minutes of film. But this is very important on how to carry the voice. Look at what Joel said. Somebody read it for me. Uh huh. Uh huh. If there is no passing on from generation to generation, there will be no voice. Because there are too many voices speaking now. Every voice has a significant. Did, did you understand? So, yes, parents talk to your children. See, with me having discussion or relationship with you, you know me. I could teach you how to avoid a pitfall that took me 20 years yes, in 20 minutes. Yes, you can learn what I did not learn for 10 years. You can learn them in one day. So you don't repeat the cycle. Then you start from my where I have achieved. You start from my achievement instead of starting from my problem. So for the next voice to carry, there has to be a, re a restoration of relationship. Like the word of God say, in that day in the book of Malachi, I'm going to restore the fathers to the son. Without this restoration, the voice will be gone just like that. Because too many things are speaking to the young people. But we got to give them a voice that will give the next generation a voice. Thank Did you, I sir. help you out? <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. That was a lot. Um, and again, if you have any questions, after our questions, you can um, raise your hand up. And someone will share with you a flashcard. Write them down. And what 